Hi guys, let's get back into the swing of things and do round two of choosing the right probiotic for you. This one is targeted specifically towards all of my SIBO people because I know that's the majority of who comes to this channel. Um, I will put a caveat in here that there's going to be another video, hopefully in the next week or so, and a blog post where I'm going to go over that new study that documented uh, the correlation between brain fog, SIBO, and D-lactic acidosis. I know a lot of you are asking about that. Um, I've had patients ask about this. It's a big thing in the SIBO world right now, and everybody is wigging out, wondering if they should not take probiotics or not take D-lactate producing probiotics. I do not think that it's the case. I don't think it's necessarily cause for concern, uh, but I'm going to be coming through that article in great detail and outlining it. I have a copy over here on my desk that's just highlighted out the wazoo. I've actually been emailing the principal investigator for that study and he's been super cool answering all my many questions. So stay tuned for that at some point. I'm going to be trying to get better about doing videos in a regular time frame so that they're not quite so sporadic. But acknowledging that that study did just come out and that the SIBO world is freaking out over probiotics, let's still discuss uh, what we had talked about in the last video, which is how do you determine which probiotic is right for you? My answer was try a bunch and see which ones, which ones make you feel better. But also let's put a couple of caveats on that for the SIBO crowd. Now, first of all, I don't think we necessarily have to worry about the lactic, uh, the D-lactate producing probiotics. That's going to encompass most probiotics, FYI. Um, I don't necessarily think we need to exercise a great deal of caution around that. Um, but the other thing is I would still treat it largely the same way. I would still say, try a bunch and see what happens. Um, the nice thing about my SIBO and my IBS folks with this, with this type of experiment is you're going to know pretty quickly when something makes you feel worse or when something makes you feel better. When your stomach is that sensitive and when your your immune system and your gut lining and your motility is just generally kind of bonkers, you're going to notice when it's profoundly better or profoundly worse. And that's one of the reasons why I started doing this experimental model of like, here, try a bunch, report back. Because usually my IBS and my SIBO people can tell within a day or two or three when one of them is horrible, one of them is wonderful, or somewhere in between. So I still I still stand by that last video of just trying a bunch and seeing what happens. Now, I have some probiotics in my office that I carry that were formulated for leaky gut, or they were formulated for SIBO, or they were formulated for, you know, inflammatory bowel disease type inflammation. And I'll tell you, they don't always work for the same conditions. This is why I started doing this. The SIBO formulated one called Cbiotica by Apex Energetics, that was formulated for SIBO. And I have had SIBO patients who just hate that probiotic. And that's okay, like maybe it's just not for them, but it still stands that it was formulated for SIBO. So you can't necessarily look at the strains or the probiotic and say, ah, everybody with SIBO will do well with this. It's just not the case. What I can tell you about probiotics is a fewfold. They do a whole lot of stuff in the human body, most of which I don't think we understand, despite our best efforts. There's a ton of research on probiotics, and I think it proves that they are marvelous and they're powerful tools, but I don't think it proves yet which strain is good for which people. I just don't think we're there yet, and I don't know if we will be for quite some time. Uh, what I can tell you is that some probiotics actually seem to have a prokinetic effect, and that's relevant for the SIBO crowd. So it actually stimulates motility somewhat. Uh, the couple, I should like to look at my screen to tell you this, uh, the couple that I've written down from my notes over the years that seem to have a prokinetic effect are uh, Lactobacillus casei, uh, Bifidolactis, Lactobacillus planetarum, Lactobacillus rhamnosus, and Bifido brevis seem to all have some prokinetic effect. So like that is particularly relevant for SIBO. Now I will say that Cbiotica blend has a couple of those in it. So I think that that's, um, that's probably why it was formulated for SIBO. There's also strains that, and there's also products that were developed for leaky gut. Most of my SIBO people have leaky gut. Like I don't even bother testing for it anymore. I just know it's there. 
you're not gonna have a raging infection in your small intestine without having leaky gut. So sometimes patients really feel a benefit from the leaky gut healing type probiotics. Cool. Some of them work more on that immune kind of balancing, that Th1, Th2 thing that seems to be off in a lot of people with IBS. Rad. Again, whichever one works for you, that's great. The other thing to know though about probiotics with SIBO is just from kind of my takeaway, I will say I never start with probiotics. Like when I know that SIBO is afoot or I have a strong hunch that SIBO is afoot, it's not like on day one that I start on probiotics. Um, I will usually do something of a kill phase with an herbal blend for SIBO. And I'll do that kill phase for usually at least one or two months before I introduce new bacteria. Now, it's just kind of a cautionary thing. I haven't really tried throwing probiotics in right on day one. It, it just hasn't been something I've experimented with. It could be that that would be totally fine, but I do exercise at least a little bit of caution throwing things into the mix as far as like new organisms into a small intestine that's already overrun with organisms. So that is one takeaway is I do think there's, there's a caution to be had. I wouldn't go to probiotics right off the get-go, but it's kind of like the FODMAP thing. Once you get a good kill phase underway, usually you can get some amount of probiotics in there relatively quickly and they can do all of their magic. So those, those are the couple of takeaways is it's still trial and error. Find the one that's right for you. Um, I don't necessarily think that strains are going to be specific to SIBO, although there's some research that points to that, maybe. Um, just in my experience, that hasn't been the case for every SIBO patient. So it's still trial and error. Um, I would say I don't think that probiotics necessarily belong at the very, very forefront of a SIBO treatment plan. I think that they could be like a phase two addition um, with the extra caveat that if you're doing prescription antibiotics, then maybe that's a time where you would want to favor adding a probiotic in right away. Um, and the last thing is, I do not think the new study is cause for a great deal of concern with the D-lactate thing. Um, that, like I said, that's a whole separate video. There's a lot of holes in that research study that I'm going to go over but I'm still waiting on another email correspondence with the PI before I get back to you on that. So anyway, I hope that was helpful and I hope that it cleared up some mystery and some confusion. Um, I'm gonna continue to do these videos in some extent when I have the time, but I look forward to seeing you in the next video and happy, happy probiotic sampling.